Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. want to give a shout out to everybody out there. Hey, Ryan, how you doing, my buddy? Oh, good morning, Pastor. Good morning, church. I'm doing rather well today. How are you doing today? Praise the Lord. I'm doing rather well, too, my brother. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you on the road or are you at home? I'm at home today. Okay, okay. Give my love to everybody at home with you, man, and uh, let's have a good day in the Lord today, okay? Oh, amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. I appreciate you very much, and thank you for your love and your support for this ministry and for your love for Jesus. Praise God. Well, bless God, everybody. Bless God. We are recording, and our recordings go to many nations in the world as we present Christ Jesus to the world, Christ Jesus locally and internationally. We present Jesus Christ. We preach the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We preach what the word of God says so that men and women's lives can be saved by God through Jesus Christ. And so that's what preaching is all about, to help men and women to come into the kingdom of God. And then we've got to preach to them to keep them in the kingdom of God. Amen. We don't preach just to get them in. We preach to keep them in. Well, God doesn't want anyone to be lost. Jesus said, all that the Father has given unto me, I will in no wise cast out. But we're wrestling these days against uh, principalities, powers, ruler spirits, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And a lot of Christians are caving in and giving up. But we're saying to you, don't give up. Don't give up. The best is yet to come. We're going through some dark days, but don't give up. The best is yet to come. We read the end of the book. You all need to read the end of the book. Don't get stuck in the middle of it. Read the entire book. Come on, join us on Wednesday nights as we study the Word of God, as we go through the book. We're discovering that uh, we win. We win. In the last portion of the book, we win. And so the entire Bible is all about uh, God's plan for mankind. God reveals to mankind who he is. He reveals to mankind his plan and his plan so that men and women, boys and girls, can be saved. You see, all people are born in sin, shaped in iniquity. We are born with a sin nature. We're born rebellious against God. But God loved us so much that he made a way that, that uh, he would take away that sin nature and give us the gift of eternal life and receive us into his kingdom as a joint heir with Jesus Christ, his son. And so uh, that's what we preach. We preach Christ Jesus, the son of God, who hung on the cross. He died on the cross so that you and I might have eternal life and so that nobody needs to be lost. Nobody needs to be lost. There's no excuse for anybody today to be lost. And if you choose Jesus, uh, Jesus will choose you and stick with him. Don't cave in. Don't quit because troubles come. Don't quit because the money gets funny. Don't quit because of sickness and distress. Don't quit because of the threat of a coronavirus. You stick with Jesus. Well, bless God. Hey, praise God. We're going to ask our friend up in Marysville, Pennsylvania, Ryan Trugler, if Ryan would come and lead us in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another day and letting us rejoice in it. And Lord, we want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and sending into heaven to be at the right hand of the Father so you may intercede for the man for all mankind. Lord, we want to thank you for, for providing all of our needs. Lord, we just want you to bless this online ministry and come down and bless Pastor Carter, which is you know, give him the courage, the wisdom, and the strength to teach us your word again today. Lord, we want to ask you to bless this nation and everybody that's in it and our leadership and our military. 
And Lord, we just we just want to say we we love you, we praise you, we worship you, and glorify you. In Jesus Lawrence, Christ, we ask with you. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, Ryan, thank you so much. Thank you so much for leading us in prayer. Praise God, and uh, we thank God for Ryan and Ryan's family, for Tara, for Jenna. Amen. We welcome. All of you, we welcome Florence Gaffney. We welcome Jackie Carter. Hey, man, praise God. All of you, hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. This is a wonderful day. This is a mighty day. Praise God. Praise God. And so we're going to continue today. We're going to continue today with the subject we started last week, um, how to avoid ministry burnout. Last week you had part one of how to avoid ministry burnout. The Lord has really put on my heart a burden for ministers, for pastors, for teachers, for preachers, for prophets, evangelists, for the servants of the Lord, for the janitor, for the custodian, for the bus driver, uh, for uh, the ushers, and the trustees, the choir members. I mean, anyone who ministers unto the Lord and ministers to God's people in the name of Jesus is subject to burnout. And so what we're seeing in the church today are a lot of people burning out. And, and, and many do not return to the Lord. And so we want to help you to prevent burnout. And if you're suffering from burnout, there, are, there is a way of escape. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There is no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're, e- able, which you're able, but he will with every temptation make the way to escape. So Matt, no matter what kind of situation you're facing, no matter what the challenge is, God will make the way of escape. And so we, we uh, want you uh, all over the world, as you listen to this message, we want you to realize that God loves you. God's got the plan for you. He knows your needs. He knows what you're up against. And he has the solution. Praise God. So we're going to look at um, how to avoid ministry burnout. Part two, Uh, this message was originally designed for pastors, but it's been extended to include everybody. The ushers need to know how to avoid burnout. The choir members, uh, the Sunday school teacher, the deacon, the trustees, the stewards, everyone needs to realize that there is a cure for burnout because God's people are burning themselves out. You know, there's only a small uh, percentage of people in every church who actually do the work. I know I can get an amen, Florence Gaffney. I know I can get an amen. There's amen. only a small percentage, just a little percentage, Melanie Bias, of people in every church who do the work. There are church goers and there are church workers. And uh, Lord have mercy when the pastor uh, discover somebody who's willing to work, oh, man, that person gets all kinds of assignments and, and gets all kinds of phone calls. And then there are those who are content to go to church. Uh, they're happy just going to church. They're happy uh, being able to sit in a pew. They're happy uh, to cross the threshold one more time. They're happy to see their friends. They're happy to hear some songs. They're happy to see their favorite deacon praying. Then they're happy to shake hands and go back home. And then they're happy uh, uh, to get back in next Sunday. And you can't ask them to do a thing. You can't ask them to do diddly squat because they ain't going to do it. They're just happy. Just happy. Happy, 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 and ain't doing a thing for the kingdom of God. Many of them don't even go home and read their scripture. Many don't even pray. Many don't pray for their pastor. Many don't pray for their fellow believers, but they're happy. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about 
how to avoid ministry burnout. It's not fair. It's not fair to let uh, uh, so-and-so do all the work. It's not fair to let so-and-so uh, uh, run the kitchen and, and prepare a meal for 200 people without some volunteers helping her. It's not fair for the janitor to have to clean everything on Saturday and nobody comes to help him. Well, that's what we pay them to do. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the problems with the church is, well, that's what we pay you to do. But what mm. is God paying you to do? Come on now. What mm -hmm. is God paying you to do? He wakes you up every morning. Well, before he wakes you up, he has his angels guarding you, watching over you while you sleep. Christian, you are some kind of special person in God's sight. God's got his angels watching over you while you sleep. When the storms are raging outside, the trees are not falling on your house, the wind's not blowing your windows in. During the winter time, when it's snowing outside, your furnace is still running. You've still got heat in your house, and God is protecting you. Then he wakes you up, stirs you to another day. And, and it's another day. It's a gift of God. And, and then he wants you to worship him. Not only worship him, but then God has an assignment for every one of us so that we can help our fellow man, uh, even if it's uh, by using your cell phone to text people, call them and pray for them, or, or going into your prayer room. You can help your fellow man by going into your prayer room. Or as Ryan Trogler does while he's driving up and down the turnpike, he's praying up and down I-76 and I-81 and praying for others. And see, that's what we're to do. We're to help one another so that nobody has to experience burnout. No pastor has to burn out. No bishop has to burn out. No first lady has to burn out. No a Sunday school teacher has to burn out. No usher has to burn out. No child has to burn out. We should not work everyone to death. Uh, everyone ought to pitch in and do something. There's something you can do for the kingdom of God. God has given gifts to every believer. And so it is up to you not just to be happy to go to church, but get happy and find out what your purpose is. Why did God plant you on this planet? What purpose are you to fulfill? And seek the Lord while he may be found. Ask God, God, what is it you want me to do? What can I do? And then when God speaks to you and shows you, then ask God, God, equip me. Help me. Help me to do what you've called me to do. You can't do it by yourself. Lord, Lord, surround me with people to help me to, to fulfill this task, mm -hmm. this challenge, this mission. And then God will raise up people to help you with this. You see, he did not sit us on this planet alone to work mm -hmm. it alone, to work all by himself. Even when he sent Jesus, Jesus, when he was baptized by John in the River Jordan, the Bible says that when Jesus came, Matthew chapter uh, 3, when Jesus came up out of the Jordan, uh, and, 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 and John talks about this, when Jesus came up out of the Jordan, the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus and lit on him and filled him. And then the Bible says Jesus was filled with the Spirit and he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. And you're going to be tempted. Satan's going to put stuff on you to try to burn you out, to try to make you quit. And he's very successful in burning people out. He's very successful. I'm going to give you a few statistics in a few moments. Uh, about burnout and what it's doing uh, to, to ministers, to members of the body of Christ. But even Jesus needed the Holy Spirit. He needed the Holy Spirit, and God sent the Holy Spirit. So you all ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Don't just try to do it all by yourself. Let the Holy Spirit 
guide you. God said in his word, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of me. And, 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 and so the Holy Spirit gives us knowledge of God, and God will show you how to do what he's called you to do. I pray that the, this word is encouraging to each and every one of you, whether you're in America or England or France or Germany or Kenya or Cameroon or Jamaica or wherever you are. I pray that this word will encourage you, encourage you. We must encourage one another in the Lord. So we thank God for Ryan Trogler for that prayer. We thank God for each and every one of you. Uh, I particularly particularly thank God for Jackie Carter who assists me in the ministry. Uh, couldn't couldn't do this without her. She's so much an important part of this ministry. And then I thank God for uh, many of you who are a very important part of this ministry. Ryan Trugler, Jean Bratton, Sam, uh, Gail, Loretta, uh, uh, Karen, uh, Brian, and Christina, so many people, um, Sharon Hudson, CK, down, both of them down, down in Texas, and my son Wes, and so many others, and, uh, and our family members. We can't do this all by ourselves, so we encourage one another in the Lord. Praise God. Let's look again at some of the signs of burnout. And you might want to do a little checklist. You might want to do a little checklist um, of these signs in your life. Um, you can tell when you're burnt out. When you start getting angry, you get mad at people, getting mad at yourself. Uh, uh, something ain't right. Can't put your finger on it. Uh, the signs of burnout. But let's look at uh, what the, the physicians say and the psychiatrists say. Stress. Stress is a sign and symptom of burnout. Stress, okay, stress, depression, insufficient sleep and rest. Man, I just can't get enough sleep, can't get enough rest. Spiritual dryness. I mean, uh, you're dry. You're, you're, you're dry bone. Oh, and, 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 and we need to read Ezekiel 37 to see how God, empowered a whole nation of dry bones and filled them with their spirit, with his spirit. And, and that nation rose up into a great and mighty army. And God wants to do the same thing with us, whether you're a pastor, a teacher, a housewife, a, a, a head of the household, a child. Uh, God wants to fill you with his spirit. That's where the power is. Jesus could not do anything without the Holy Ghost. And you and I, we need the Holy Spirit. And you know what? Something about the Holy Spirit, he never loses his power. I say he, not it. The Holy Spirit is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's the third person of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost never loses his power. He can never lose his power. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit can never experience burnout. Listen, the Holy Spirit will never experience burnout. You watch. This coronavirus will burn out before the Holy Spirit burns out. Before God gives up and caves in, the, whole, the, uh, the, the coronavirus will be long gone, ladies and gentlemen, long mm -hmm. gone. Lying, deception, corruption, uh, 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 this, this pitiful government we have that is so deceiving, so deceptive, and, 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 and so uh, divisive, this kind of government will be long gone, and the Holy Spirit will still ride on. Ride on, King Jesus. No man shall hinder thee. Ride on, King Jesus. No man shall hinder thee. When this, when this coronavirus, this COVID-19 is history, and COVID-20, and COVID-21, COVID-22, COVID-23 are history, God is still on the throne, and you know what? He has not lost his power. He has not lost his power. You can take a piece of paper and burn it, and it's gone. And when it burns, it's gone, just some ashes. You say, where is it? Well, it's gone some in the atmosphere, in the form of vapor, in the form of smoke, uh, some of residue. Uh, it's gone. It's no longer there. But, but God can never burn up. 
ladies and gentlemen, God can never burn up. People burn up. Man, I've seen many people. They man, they get excited. Pastor Card, I'm I'm joining your school, Junior School of Ministry, and and they've signed up for classes. They do two weeks of work, ladies and gentlemen. It's pitiful. Some people just can't hang. They too do two weeks of homework. I say, man, I can't keep up with this. Look here, look here. If you're going to do something for God, you've got to have a determination. You've got to have some stick to itness. You've got to have a made up mind. And I've seen people come to come to the altar and say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm tired of this life of sin. I'm tired of living in adultery. I'm tired of living in fornication. I'm tired of being a liar. I'm tired of being a gambler. I'm tired of these drugs. I'm tired of this alcohol. And they give their heart to Jesus, and they run with Jesus for three weeks. Three weeks, ladies and gentlemen. Three weeks. Some of them can't come to church four weeks in a row. Four weeks in a row. They can't hang four weeks in a row. Before long, you say, where is so-and-so? Oh, they're going back out in the world. He's still selling drugs. Uh, he, he moved in with, with, with his uh, uh, girlfriend's girlfriend. And and And... Ladies and gentlemen, God has the power if we would just seek him for the power. The, the scripture, God is just begging. God is just begging people to trust him with his power. The scripture says in Second Chronicles 16, 9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect toward him. God's eyes are running, ladies and gentlemen, right now, all around the earth. He's just looking for somebody whom he can prove himself strong for. He's looking for somebody who's experienced frustration, who's experienced sickness, who's experienced uh, 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 persecution, somebody who's uh, being tempted, and God is ready to prove himself strong on their behalf. So these signs of burnout, stress, depression, insufficient sleep, rest, spiritual dryness, loss of motivation for ministry, loss of motivation for ministry. Uh, 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 there are people who don't feel motivated to do ministry anymore. I remember we used to have a cadre of people. We'd go around the neighborhood knocking on doors and giving out tracts and greeting people and asking them, do you have a prayer need, a prayer concern? And here, read this, and we invite you to come to our church. If you want to ride, give us a call, and we'll come and pick you up. I mean, people were so excited about that. And then, uh, as we continue that kind of work, um, a few weeks later, the numbers dwindled. The numbers dwindled until uh, one day I found myself all by myself. And so, so ministry burnout. People, their, 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 their intentions are good but they don't have that stick to itness, And that stick to itness is the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to guide us. And then the Holy Spirit will tell you when it's time to rest. When it's time to rest, the Holy Spirit may say, take a rest. It's time for you to rest. You've been working hard. Rest. Come away and rest. Come away and rest. And uh, that's why we want to uh, eventually build a pastor's retreat a retreat for ministers. Yes, Sunday school teachers can go there, and choir members can go there, and ushers can go to that place and spend a few days before the Lord and get rest and get healing and get built up in the Holy Spirit so they can get back out there. Everybody needs, needs to come away for some rest. Praise God. And then there are other signs of burnout. Uh, feelings of isolation. Let me go back to motive, loss of motivation for, uh, for ministry. Loss of motivation for ministry. And here's a classic example. A young man, his mother woke him up one Sunday morning and said, John, get up. John, get up. Get up out of bed. And John said, oh, mom, I don't feel like getting up. John, get up out of bed. Get up out of bed. Uh, 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 it's time to go to church. You've got to go to church. Oh, Mom, Mom I, ain't, I don't feel like going to church. I'm not going back to that church. Well, why aren't you going to go back to church? Well, I'm going to give you three reasons. Mom, 
Uh, now, I'm going to give you two reasons. Mom, uh, they don't like me, and I don't like them, so I'm not going back to church. And, and his mother said, well, I'm going to give you a three, uh, a two reasons why you ought to go back to church. Number one, you're 50 years old, and number two, you're the pastor of the church. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, everybody, look here, everybody gets to a point where we lose that motivation for ministry. I mean, hey, certain folks can drive you to, drive you to the, the, the edge. They can get on your last nerve. They get on your last nerve. But this young man, he was 50 years old. He's a pastor of the church. And his mama told him, I'm going to give you two reasons why you ought to go to church. So he had to find some motivation for ministry. And there are people out there, ladies and gentlemen, there are pastors out there. They're tired. They're burnt out. Choir directors are burnt out. Ushers are burnt out. Bible teachers are burnt out. Uh, 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 and and and. and the, hand, the janitors burn out and the custodians and, and the few workers who are faithful workers, they're burnt out. They just need some help. And, 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 and then the first thing we say when, when, they, when they decide to take a little break and stay home and get some rest because they need some rest, they ain't saved. We judge them. We say they ain't saved. They weren't saved. Ryan, we judge them. Well, they weren't saved anyway. He wasn't saved. He's just perpetrating. Ladies and gentlemen, don't be quick to judge because if you haven't experienced burnout, your time is coming. Your time is coming. And there are a lot of people out there hanging on an edge. They're hanging. The only thing holding them up is their fingernails, ladies and gentlemen. They're hanging on an edge about to slip, and they need somebody to come to their rescue. We're talking about pastors, teachers, preachers, prophets, apostles, members of the body of Christ. We're talking about people in your household. We might even be talking about you just waiting on someone with an encouraging word. They don't need to hear somebody say, oh, she wasn't saved anyhow, or, or she ain't worth it. Everyone is worth it, ladies and gentlemen, everyone. Here's another sign of burnout, feelings of isolation. You feel like you're all alone. Nobody cares about you. Susceptibility to temptation. You can't resist temptation no matter how much you try. You said you're going to get away from that adulterous situation. You're not going to commit adultery or you're not going to smoke dope anymore. You're not going to do drugs. You're not going to drink alcohol. And then the oh. phone rings and, 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 and your friend says, hey, come on over. I got a bottle of, of, of uh, 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 um, old crow, or I got a bottle of this or that. I, I got a couple forties. Uh, I got some fresh stuff from Jamaica. Man, you smoke this, it'll set you free. Mm -hmm. And before long, you're back over there, and you're back in bondage. So, so Satan is tempting every one of us, ladies and gentlemen, and trying to burn us out trying to separate us from God. His scheme, his grand scheme, his grand strategy is to separate people from the Lord Jesus Christ. So these are just um, symptoms of burnout. There are different types of burnout. You can have physical burnout. I mean, your body's just tired. You're worn out. You need some rest. You need a healing. Uh, there's relational burnout. Your relationship is burnout. Your marriage is burnt out. You need to go uh, and renew your marriage, restore your marriage, restore those right. vows. Go back to uh, day one when you first met her or you first met him and rebuild and ask the Holy Ghost to rebuild your marriage. There's emotional burnout uh, uh, when and the pastors, many pastors experience emotional burnout because there's so much, they've spent so much time and energy giving to others and they don't have anyone to give to them. Every shepherd needs a shepherd. Even David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. And the Lord, our great shepherd, the shepherd and bishop of our soul, may say, well, come away. Come apart for three days. Go to the pastor's retreat. 
go to the mountains, go to the hills, get a cabin, uh, go to a quiet place and spend three days and, 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 and turn your cell phone off and, 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 and just spend some time with me. Take your Bible, take your notebook, let me speak to you, hear what I have to say, and, and, and uh, re, uh, uh, enliven, quicken your prayer life. Let's get back to prayer. Let's get back to the time that we pray. Remember when you prayed desperately when you were uh, when the doctor said you had cancer or you had high blood pressure or you had diabetes or uh, uh, the doctor said your kidneys were failing and you prayed desperately and God healed you and and I remember when 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 they were going to repossess your home or repo your car and you pray desperately. Remember when uh, your boss said you're, you're going to be laid off and, and you lo you'll lose your job and you prayed and God gave you another job. Ladies and gentlemen, what has happened to the, those times of trusting in the Lord and calling upon the Lord? And so what we have in the body of Christ, in the church, uh, uh, whether it's your local church or that local church, in the body of Christ, we have so many people who are hurting hurting, ladies and gentlemen, hanging on the edge. And so Satan hits us with a coronavirus where now we're even more separated from one another. We've got to wear masks. Uh, they even talk about social isolation even in your own home, and that's stressful. That is causing more stress in many households. Uh, we've got people uh, who who uh, can't take the isolation, enough is enough, I'm losing my money, uh, I'm not making money, uh, uh, the church is saying we don't have any fellowship, we can't pay our bills, and so we're going to open up again, and so what is happening in America is so many people and so many governors have said we're, we're going to uh, start up again, and now the numbers are even worse than before. And so we're going to have to go back to day one, fighting this coronavirus, and trying to get a solution. And then you got a leader who, uh, a leader who, who is twisting the truth, and uh, uh, now he's afraid he's going to get the coronavirus, and he doesn't know what to do. And so, and God is like, hey, whoa, what about me, y'all? What about me? I am the Lord your God. Whoa, what about me? I am the Lord your God. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. I will fight your battles for you. Be still and know that I am God. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And because I started a sermon today and didn't give you any scripture, 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. We use that as our scripture, 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. God is letting us know through this writing by the Apostle Paul that we are to be steadfast. Hang in there. Be unmovable. Don't let the devil shake you. Don't let these world events shake you. Don't let the politics shake you. Don't let the denomination shake you. Don't let any doctor's report shake you. Be steadfast. Keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the Holy Spirit. Trust the Lord. God knows what he wants to do in your life. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. God is able to keep all of us. His angels are given charge over us. us. They will prevent us from dashing our feet against a stone. They will hold us up in their arms. No plague shall come nigh our dwelling. That's God's promise, ladies and gentlemen. And so, and so as we look at how to avoid ministry burnout, we've got to realize that to avoid ministry burnout means that we've got to really fine-tune our walk with the Lord. 
We've got to stop doing some things and get back to our basics. This is back to basics ministry, ladies and gentlemen. We've been preaching this for years, uh, getting back to the basics, studying the word of God, praying, trusting God, walking in love, fighting the good fight of faith, putting on the whole armor of God, realizing that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Love your neighbor as yourself. When you sin, be quick to repent. These are the basics, ladies and gentlemen. These are the basics. But the church, we've gotten so far out there. You know, we got this, and we've got that, and we've taken our eyes off the Lord, and we think we're self-sufficient, and we can do all things by ourselves. And then we get these, these, these uh, uh, prima donna leaders who try to uh, think they're above God, and then, then the church starts putting their trust in the leaders and not on God, and so you find yourself in the mess that we're in. But there is a way of escape. There's a healing, ladies and gentlemen, for pastors. There's a healing for ministers. There's a healing for tired and weary Sunday school teachers. There's a healing for the kitchen committee. There's a healing for the burnout housewife. There's a healing for the burnout husband. There's a healing for the rebellious children. And that healing comes from Jesus. And so we've got to repent. We've got to repent. And repent for what, Pastor Carter? What have I done? If you walked in ways that are not of the God, if you've allowed other things to uh, influence you, those things became idols. We've got to confess idols, get rid of the idols in our lives. We've got to uh, uh, get rid of the adulterous situations. And adultery could even be worshiping idols and letting idols whisper in your ear and letting demons whisper in your ear and taking counsel from sources other than God. We've got to repent. And when we repent, God will heal us and hear us and heal the land. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, I will heal their land. Praise God. And finally, let me share these, some of these statistics with you. And these are 2017 statistics. These are three years old. And so these statistics are even more exaggerated now. But what I want to share some things with you to let you know that we need to get back to God. And we need to encourage others to get back to God. And we need to learn how to trust in the Lord with all our heart and to walk by faith and not by sight. Don't walk by what you see around you. That is not real. Walk by what God is guiding us to do according to his word. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. Look at these burnout statistics. Three years old now. Okay. 13% of active pastors are divorced. 13% of active pastors are divorced. That's active pastors are divorced. So what's that say about marriage? Saying a whole lot about marriage. How can you preach about marriage if you've been divorced and, and you're not faithful in your marriage? And that's only 13% of active pastors. There are a lot of inactive pastors who are divorced. They're, they're inactive because of their divorces. 23% of pastors have been fired or pressured to resign at least once in their careers. 23% of, act of pastors have been fired by their churches or pressured to resign at least once in their careers. Now, you know, you know, churches, once they start paying you a salary, they think they own you. And they, they, some, of, some of them even tell you what to preach and what not to preach. Uh, I, I've never been a pastor who allowed anybody. Nobody tells me what to preach. Nobody but God. If God says preach it, I'm going to preach it. If you don't like it, that's your problem. I'm going to preach it anyhow. I've been fired. I got fired from my first church because of my attitude. My attitude was God called me, and I'm going to preach. And, and when they said, well, you need to stop preaching about adultery and shacking up, because 
of the 24 leaders in the church, about 20 of them were shacking up with one another. Uh, they, and I'm talking about shacking up. That's the old term. I mean, they were living with somebody and they were not married. And they were the leaders of the church. Mm. 25% of pastors' wives see their husband's work schedule as a source of conflict. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. 25% of pastors' wives see their husband's work schedule as a source of conflict. In other words, your work schedule is conflicting with our home and with our marriage. And, I, and that's 25% of pastors' wives. I believe, I truly believe that number is much higher. That, that uh, 25% of pastors' wives see their husband's, their husband's work schedule as conflicting with the marriage and the home. 33% felt burnout within their first five years of ministry. <laughs> I felt burnt out my first, my first year, my first six months of ministry, my first week. I was burnt out my first week. God sent me to Chester, Pennsylvania. Those folks were so mean and so nasty in that church. I wasn't even there a week, man, a week, a week. Lord Jesus. 33% say, 33% say that being in ministry is an outright hazard to their family. Mm. Listen, these are people whom God has called. I hope God has called them. Well, a lot of ministers have not been called. They, they went into ministry. They inherited the ministry. Or somebody said they ought to be a pastor or, 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 or you look like a pastor. So somebody offered them a job as a pastor. And, and most churches don't seek God for their pastors they go through a process of looking someone over and listening to their sermon. Well, when a pastor's candidating for a church, of course he's going to preach his favorite sermon. He memorized that sermon. He knows uh, uh, when to hoop and holler, and he knows how to put on the show. But to get a church, to get a real pastor church, you need to pray. You need to fast. You need to pray. And, and I'm telling you, all, listeners, in order to find a good church, you need to pray. You need to fast. You need to get on knee bone station. You need to ask God, God, show me where to go to church. Don't call your girlfriend. Don't call your boyfriend. Don't call your, your family members what church you go to. You need to seek God. God, where do you want me to be planted? Because if you don't seek God for the church he wants you to be in, you might find yourself in a witchcraft church. You might find yourself in a church that does not believe in the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. You might find yourself wound up in a Unitarian church where they do, they do not believe in Jesus. They do not believe in the Holy Spirit. They do not believe in, in the Heavenly Father. You might find yourself in a unity church where they preach the Christ idea but do not preach Christ. You will find yourself in a church where uh, 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 it's all right to drink. You may find yourself in a church where you're, the pastor's a lesbian and the first lady's a lesbian. You may find yourself in a church where the pastor's gay and the first lady is gay. The first lady got a longer beard than the pastor. And, and, and you may find your church, yourself in a church where it's so messed up that the Holy Spirit has withdrawn himself from the place and the pra place is an anachronism and, and, and just wait on God to explode it. You may find yourself in a mess. You may find yourself in a church where the pastor's on drugs, uh, the pastor's a cocaine uh, 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 freak, uh, the pastor's on heroin. Ladies and gentlemen, you may find yourself in a church where all kinds of stuff is going on, where they take excursions to the, uh, the uh, casinos, where they have orgies. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't pray and seek God, if you trust your friends and your family members to show you the church, ladies and gentlemen, you're missing the point. I believe that every Christian has the responsibility to seek God. God, where do you want me to worship? And you know what? With this coronavirus, a lot of people are going to be praying that prayer, God, where can I worship? Where can I worship? I believe God's opening up a lot of eyes of a lot of people to let them know that, you know, my church wasn't on target. My church was not on point. Now that I can't go there, I'm realizing they ain't been on point. They were em emphasizing this and emphasizing that, but they have not been preaching holiness and righteousness. 
They have not been, been, been glorifying, honoring God. And so a lot of people right now are on the fringe, ladies and gentlemen. I thank God for this online church, and I thank God for the number of online churches where, where uh, pastors now have to preach uh, to an invisible audience and are mm. preaching Christ Jesus and holiness. I hope they are anyhow. Uh, and, and God is doing a new thing. And before this thing is all over, ladies and gentlemen, going to church is going to be a whole different thing before long. It ain't going to be church as usual. And so God is calling us to seek him while he may be found. While we're in this uh, social isolation, social distancing, and, and we've got to wear masks, God is saying, now what about me? Will you seek me now while you can find me? Because God knows a lot of you and a lot of others have been going to church. He just says, happy. Now I'm just as happy. I can go to church, hear my pastor preach, hear my choir sing. I come back home. There's no challenge. There's no challenge on my life. I can get back into drinking my liquor, smoking my dope, running with my neighbor's wife. I can keep on cheating and lying. Uh, there's no, no, no check and balance on my life. I'm just as happy as long as I can go to Second Baptist, as long as I can go to First Pentecostal. And, and, and if, if things get a little bit edgy, I can call a church member. We're talking over. Uh, we uh, have, a, have an online meeting, and, and we're talking over and figure out a strategy. But nobody's calling on Jesus. And God has us in a place now, ladies and gentlemen, where it's call on Jesus or perish. It's going to get down to the point where you either call on Jesus or you perish because what God is doing, he's exposing a lot of the churches to let you realize, hey, that church ain't all it's cut out to be. The church has missed the mark. And God's going to call a lot of people back to the mark, back to basics. He's going to humble a lot of people. Don't get lost in the process, ladies and gentlemen. Don't get lost. I thank God for this online church. A lot of people who laughed at us five years ago, ah, that ain't no church. That ain't no church. Now they're finding out that, hey, we are steadfast. We're unmovable. We're continuing in the work of the Lord. We're abounding in the work of the Lord. The messages I preached five years ago, I'm still preaching those same messages now. I have not wavered. I have not chinched on God. I've not punked out. I've not copped out. I'm preaching holiness and righteousness, and so are ma many others on the online church. And those who laughed at the online church realize, hey, that's a stable church. That's a stable church. They're stable. They're stable in Christ. And our stability is in Christ Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. We have uh, this, this power in us. The excellency of the power is of God, not of us. We take no credit for this, but I thank God that God's got churches standing for holiness and righteousness in times like these. And if we can help keep you together while God does what he has to do, good, good. But let us do it with integrity. Let us do it without uh, manipulating people, exploiting people, abusing people. Are trying to use people. And God's exposing a lot of churches because they have been using people, manipulating people, uh, politicizing people. And, and, and God is cleaning house, ladies and gentlemen. He's cleaning house. And now a lot of churches who are going back are going back in there because the, the governor said it's safe to do so. Before long, give them a couple weeks, they'll be back home trying another strategy, trying another strategy. But the strategy depends on seeking the Lord. Get into the prayer room. Stay in God's face. Stay in God's presence. Humble yourself before the Lord. Walk in love. Trust the Lord. Study his word. Let God show you what he wants to do. And in the process, you will avoid burnout. You'll avoid burnout. Uh, this is a time where uh, a lot of you are getting some rest. You're resting from that weary church work. 
Some of you are resting. You don't have to, you're finding out that you don't have to be there every day. You don't have to be at every meeting. You don't have to be at every event. And you can rest. And some of you, it's time to rebuild your marriages, rebuild relationships, and then rebuild yourself in the Holy Ghost. Spend some time with the Lord. Get into a Bible study. Get into, study. I'm talking about studying the Bible for yourself and not or waiting on someone else on Wednesday night to teach you. But get into the word for yourself. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm telling you, just I'm sitting here before you, the time is coming where there will be no church, no mm-hmm. buildings. Mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, the time is coming. There will be no Bibles. The time is coming. When the government is going to persecute those who call themselves followers of Jesus Christ. And so the church is in you. Where two or more are gathered, we're the church. The church is anyone who believes in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and has received him as their Savior and Lord. That's the church. Ladies and gentlemen, the buildings will not be in existence. The time is coming and the, the, the kind of government is coming in this world, in this world system, even in the United States of America, where you will be persecuted if they know you're a Christian. You might even be put to death if they know you're a Christian. And so make up your mind right now. I'm going to trust in the Lord. The Bible tells us trusting in the Lord is a win-win situation. Trusting in the Lord is a win-win situation. Well, Pastor Card, you just pre- presented a scary outlook. Well, yes, it is very scary because it ain't going, things aren't going to get better. Things are not going to get better. Satan, Satan is raging, and, and, and we're not wrestling against uh, a flesh and blood. Our enemies are not people. Although uh, Satan's trying to get a pattern in this nation where he wants whites hating blacks and blacks hating whites and Hispanics hating blacks and blacks hating Hispanics and everybody hating the Jews and everybody hating the Chinese. And you got a president promoting this sort of thing. But mm-hmm. our, our, our warfare is not carnal, ladies and gentlemen. People are not our enemies. The enemy is Satan. And he's very effective in separating Christians from the church and from one another and he's dividing and conquering and 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 now that a lot of people who have depended on their churches to give them that that alka seltzer feeling once a week every sunday ah i went to church ah i was in my church i sat in my pew i'm happy plop plop fizz fizz Oh, what a relief it is. It's like taking an alka seltzer. Ah, I can go and do my thing one more week, another week. Then I'll go back and, ah, I'll take another alka seltzer. Ah, I'll take another bromo seltzer. Ah, I'll take another plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Ladies and gentlemen, that ain't going to get it. Because the time is going to come where there be no building to attend. There'll be a time when, when, when many of us might have to uh, hang out, live in caves in the ground or in trees or in groves. Uh, and and, 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 and there'll be no Bibles. Uh, Back to Basics Ministries has been preaching this for 25 years. There'll be no Bibles. And, and anyone uh, talking about Christ Jesus will be put to death or in prison or in mm-hmm. concentration camps. We're not far from that, ladies and gentlemen, because you got one in the White House now who's promoting that sort of thing. He's, he's setting the stage for this thing to take place. And the church has been deceived and duped. Now the church, uh, uh, they're, half of the church believe if you're not a Republican, then you're not a Christian. Other half, if you're not a Democrat, you're not a Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, you must be born again by the Spirit of God. And so during this time of self-distancing and isolation, find the Lord Jesus Christ. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. 
because perilous times are coming. These are the last days. Read 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let me finish this with starting with 1 Corinthians 15, verses, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. <coughs> Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Flesh and blood, ladies and gentlemen, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. We've got people in this nation who think that because of your certain flesh and blood, certain political persuasion, you're going to inherit the kingdom. And, 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 and these are corrupt people who think that if you follow them, you'll have incorruption, immortality. Ladies and gentlemen, now people are tearing down statues of people who, who got, people had, had labeled as immortal. They're tearing down the statues of, 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 of Robert E. Lee and, 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 and uh, 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 Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, slaveholders. They're tearing, ladies and gentlemen, now if they're tearing down those statues, don't be deceived. Pretty soon they'll want to tear down Martin Luther King's statue. They'll want to tear down Fannie Lou Hamer's uh, statue. And then before long, ladies and gentlemen, next they're going to get John Wayne. You know, uh, because he, he, he was in all those racist movies, destroying the Indians. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, don't be deceived. Uh, they're, they're tearing down statues of Woodrow Wilson, the pre one president of the United States who was a racist. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, before long, they'll be tearing down statues of Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse and, and, and Daffy Duck. So if they, were gonna, if they would tear down Mickey Mouse's statue and Donald Ducks and Daffy Ducks, Donald Ducks and Daffy Ducks, and they're going to tear down your statue. So corruption cannot inherit in corruption. We're all corrupt. We need to be born again. Everybody in the church who claims they belong to Jesus is not born again. You must be born again. Well, how can I be born again, Pastor? You can be born again if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Confess that and then live it. Start living. Stop hating on others. You can't be born again and hating others despite what the, they say in the White House, despite what they say on, on, on TBN, despite what your pastor might say. You cannot go to heaven hating others. I don't care who you are, how much you preach, and what you preach, how many uh, uh, buildings you've built, how many meals you've given to the hungry. If you hate on others and you preach hatred and you call yourself a Christian and you're hiding behind God, you're only deceiving yourself. The Bible says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, ruler spirits, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So we all need to repent. Behold, I show you a mystery, the Bible says. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Verse 53, 1 Corinthians 15, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the sting and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Don't compromise. Don't compromise with these political powers. Don't compromise with sex. Don't compromise with idolatry. Don't compromise with money. 
Don't compromise with alcohol. Don't compromise with this world system. Corruption cannot bring forth incorruption. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. If you say you're a Christian, walk the walk. Don't just talk the talk. Walk the walk. Be more than happy to go to church. Let people see the church in you. Take the church wherever you are. Take Christ Jesus wherever you are. And even if you're confined in your house with a mask on, in your own house, you can still let Christ Jesus live in you and through you that others will see. That's a Christian. That's a sincere follower of God. Do not be deceived by this world system. Do not be deceived by these corrupt political leaders. Do not be deceived by some of these uh, powerful church leaders who are riding high with their mega ministries and the mega bucks. Ladies and gentlemen, seek the Lord while he may be found. There's a cure for pastoral burnout. There's a cure for ministry burnout. Let this time of our lives be the time in which we get a refreshing. Take advantage of this time of isolation and draw nigh unto the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. Fill me. Fill me. Fix me. Mold me. Make me. Break me. Shape me. Deliver me. Separate me from sin. I repent of my sins. Lord, fix me for whatever you'll have me to do. Then fill me with your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That's what Back to Basics is all about. Let's go back to basics. Let's avoid burnout. And if you have burnout, let's start burning again. Let's burn again with the Holy Ghost. Let's get filled with the Holy Ghost. The Scripture says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. If I never set foot in a church again, ladies and gentlemen, I want people to see that the church lives inside of me in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, on this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you never go back to church as we think of the church, but as you seek the Lord with all your heart, let him fill you with the Holy Ghost. Study the word of God. Pray. Offer yourself unto God. Be available every day. And watch what God will do. Our trust is in the Lord. Father, we thank you. I bless you and praise you and honor you. God, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all iniquity and all unrighteousness. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, Lord. If there be any hearing my voice today, no matter where they are in the world, no matter who they are, if they are not saved, help them to receive the gift of salvation by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord and believing in their hearts that you raise Jesus from the dead, Father. And I thank you. I trust you to keep us and guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to end our recording. And if anyone would like to get in touch with me, if you've got any questions, comments, please feel free to get in touch with me. Praise God. God bless you. We're going to stop.